creepy. The prison. I always try to get past this window fast. Uh, uh, hello? Is anyone there? You bet there is. Uh. My name is Wilbur Weathervane. Who are you? Wilbur Weathervane? Good alias. Call me Mr. X. My friends call me X. X? Strange name. Still, better than goalpost head, I guess. Why are you locked up? They want me out of the way. I know too much. But they don't just lock people up for being intelligent. They do if you know the wrong things. We are being watched. By whom? They are watching us. Who are they? The wizards? Them. The ones watching us. They're out there. How long have you been in prison? A few days, but I suspect they will never let me out. I'm a political prisoner. They want to silence me. Tell everyone. The truth is out there. Here? In Seastone? Uh, yes. Probably. Do you really think you'll be in there long? They certainly won't let me go before the elections. That Van Buren wants to show her strength, and it's anybody's guess what'll happen afterwards. Either way, I'm not gonna wait until some court passes judgment on me. I'll escape as soon as I have the chance. Zloth, the inn's landlord, said you were arrested because you didn't want to let Mr. Shieldhand search you. And why should I? I haven't done anything wrong. He knew I was one of the protesters. He just wanted an excuse to lock me up. If you're one of the protesters, then you'd have to know the secret hand signal, right? Yeah. Can you show it to me? Ha! So you can tell them what it is. No! I need it! And I'm one of you. Then you must know the signal yourself. Um, of course I do. Yeah? Then do it for me. Do the secret signal. No problem. But you first. What's all that about? I don't know if you're one of us. Besides, you've been in prison for quite a while. And maybe they brainwashed you. Hmm. All right. Now you. You are one of us. Well then, uh, I have to be going. Take care of yourself, brother. Again. Do the secret sign. Find it. Aye, spot on. I guess you really are one of us. That's what I told you. Here, take these. You can hang them up in the upper town. Posters? I'm really more interested in the clay. Yeah, yeah. Here's some clay as well. May this clod of pure earth serve the good cause. Oh, it will. So then this hole... That should keep out any poison gas. The rest of the clay is for the golem head.
Usually citizens and visitors to the inn warm up by the fireplace on cold nights. Paper, wood, everything's here, except for someone looking to warm up. Hmm, right then. How should my golem look? Oh, yeah, that's the way I like it. Do it. The eyes, yeah. Oh, the nose. Mmm. Oh, that's tricky. And, of course, not to forget the mouth opening. That's it. Perfect. Should Block and Van Buren manage to fire me, I think I'll turn sculptor or golem head designer. A small fire spell can't hurt. Ignifaxius Ignisfero. I'm pretty sure that clay sculptures aren't usually baked this way. But hey, this is innovation. The knight doesn't seem to have legs anymore, but he does have two strong arms of stone that any golem would be happy to have. The knight doesn't... I'll paste up the place on the wall where I want to hang the posters. Should make less of a mess than the other way around. Okay, troll spit isn't as sticky as troll snot, but maybe it'll do as a substitute for paste. Hello, Mr. Shieldhand. Well, I never. If it isn't Little Weathervane. There's a protest poster on the notice board over there. So? It's against Council Leader Van Buren. What filth? That's vandalism of the worst kind. Without a chisel or something like that, I'll never get the arms off cleanly. I don't want to destroy them. The coat of arms of the proud town of Seastone. Capital of the Alliance and largest town in all Aventasia. With the refugee camp on the outskirts of town, Seastone seems larger than ever before. I should chat with X as little as possible. They could be watching us. Yes? 
I talked to a prisoner in the upper tower. He's one of yours, isn't he? A victim of the state's power. Our first martyr. He's not dead yet. And if he got the cake, he'll be back with us soon. Cake? Shh. Have to be going. May the protest never end. something about a cake at the barricade? Yeah, great work. I wanted a file to free myself. What did those geniuses send me? A bloody chisel. Well, it's the thought that counts. Perhaps if they'd hidden a hammer in the cake as well? I shall be bringing that up at the next group meeting, numpties. Chisel, can you lend it to me? What do you need it for? Maybe I could use it to help you escape. Doesn't sound bad. But how about you think up a plan first, and then I give you the chisel? About your chisel? Yes. I might have the right hammer for it. Really? That'd be good. Yes, but... First, you'd have to lend me your chisel for a bit, and then I'll return it with the right type of hammer. <sighs> what if you don't? Perhaps the guard will catch you. Or you'll meet the love of your life while hammering and simply forget about me. Or perhaps you'll be appointed God of Thunder and sod off to Asgard. Anything is possible, more or less. But I'll definitely bring you a perfectly matched hammer and chisel first. Nah, too risky. I'll only give you the hammer if you give me the chisel. Mm. Then you'll have a chisel and no hammer, and I'll have a hammer and no chisel. I just wanted to check if you were paying attention. What type of hammer do you want? Eh? What type of hammer? Just a hammer. Oh, but there's a whole range of them. I lived with the dwarves for a long time and learned quite a bit about hammer technology. You could have a dwarven steel head hammer, a common round head hammer, a war hammer, an MC hammer. A dwarven steel head hammer? Yeah, left or right handed. I, I just want to knock a few stones out of the wall. Out of this wall? What kind of chisel have you got? When was it made? And oh, what type of alloy did they use? I... don't know! Hammer and chisel have to be perfectly matched, you see. If they're not, well, things can get pretty ugly. Really? You see, if the metal used in the hammer and chisel aren't compatible, every blow could cause sparks. So? I don't care. Well, not even when the straw in your cell starts to burn. Ah. But I don't know what kind of chisel it is. <sighs> That's why you should always work with professionals. Give me the chisel and I'll look for the right hammer. Ah, oh, thanks. Well then. Uh, I have to be going. Take care of yourself, brother.
Hello, Mr. Shieldhand. Well, I never, if it isn't Little Weathervane. There's another protest poster over there. I don't believe it. Who in the upper town could be working with those dirty protesters? Sorry, old friend. Oh, he still looks ready to fight. Hello? What is the access code? The code is 46941. Correct. Um, then shouldn't you be opening right about now? I don't know your voice. Headmaster Block hasn't introduced you to me. But I have the code. I have a dual-level security system. The correct code must be delivered in the voice of a teacher whom I know. That would have been too easy. I, um... <clears throat> it's me, Headmaster Block. I may not have the power of sight, but I do have an exceptional pair of ears. You are not Headmaster Block. The door won't be fooled so easily. The code has to be spoken in Headmaster Block's voice. That is a bit of a problem. As soon as I have time, I might see if some of these books actually belong in the library. Then again, I'd say they're more likely notes from former teachers and learning materials. And what's this? Oh, a class photograph. For a while, photography was very fashionable. A sorcerer unveiled these little devices which could take detailed pictures of the real world. However, it turned out that small demons inside the cameras were responsible for painting the pictures. They stole a piece of soul from those photographed. Photography quickly went out of fashion. One of the first clues that demons were in the cameras was that those photographed made strange grimaces they would never make in reality. A number of the students in this photo look more than odd. The graduating class of 1462 is written in ornate script above the image. Headmaster Block? Yes? Apparently, it's not enough to just know the staff room door code. You have to have been introduced to the door, too. Correct. The door knows by means of the voice who has access and who doesn't. And who has access? At the moment, only me. Apparently, it's not a Correct. And who has... At the moment... Have to be going. Goodbye. What can I do for you? Can you imitate?
imitate voices? I can imitate the call of more than 17 birds. I'm more interested in human voices. I am sorry. I only have one voice at my disposal. A very pretty voice. Oh, uh, of course. I can, however, record speech. Record speech? What do you mean? Record speech? What do you mean? Fantastic! Fantastic! Okay, you, you, you can stop now. How does this recording thing work? I can record all of your conversations. If desired, I can play back only certain parts of the recording. You mean that if I can somehow get the headmaster to say 4, 60, 9 and 41 in conversation, you could repeat those numbers in his voice? Correct. Excellent. I might have some more questions for you later. And I might answer. Headmaster Block? Yes? Would you please say the word nine, Headmaster Block? No. Why should I? Just because? Professor Weathervane, it may be that you pass your evenings with silliness, but I prefer to be productive in the twilight hours. Of course. Forgive me. How many rings of power did the humans get again? What are you talking about? In that saying. Three rings for the elven kings under the sky. Seven for the dwarf lords in the halls of stone. You know. Never heard of it. I wonder whether we should hang up some balloons tomorrow morning for the school's inauguration. Red ones would be best. What do you think? What would be a typical number of red balloons? We don't have scope in the budget for balloons. I also find them rather unsuitable. 98, maybe? 99? I said no balloons. I could really go for a nice dwarven ale about now. How about you? It would kill you on the spot. You do know that. Oh, I grew up with dwarves. The cellar master always served dwarven ale in the garrison pub. It's strictly forbidden. Who says? Licensing law, paragraph 9, section 1. Dwarven ale may only be served in specially secured underground bunkers. Paragraph 9 says that. Paragraph 9, indeed. Ah, the cellar master probably didn't know that. I'm going to send a carrier pigeon off to him tomorrow morning to warn him. This photograph of a school class was in the wrong cupboard. I'd like to file it away correctly, but I don't know where. Show me that. The year is written boldly and clearly, 1462. 62? Yes, 62. Ah, thanks for your help. Why did they appoint you, of all people, treasurer? Well, I think the leader of the council values my punctilious manner and neat bookkeeping. In addition, I was, if I may be so bold as to simply come out and say it, mathematics champion for several years in succession in my youth. So you were a mathematics champion in your youth? For several years in succession, in fact. Hmm. Then tell me, what is... 65 plus... 23 minus 47? 41. Are you sure? I get 40. 41, without a doubt. Thanks. That's all I wanted. A clear liquid in a glass, in a bar. What could it be? Water. Um, sure. Why not? A nice glass of cold water. 
It's warm water. I drink two glasses of warm water every evening. It helps the digestive process. Why don't you drink three glasses of water? Or four? Four glasses of water in one evening? That really would be decadent. Besides, you'd probably have to keep getting out of bed to go to the toilet. Yes, four glasses of water would simply be too many. But it's good that we were able to talk about that. Have to be going. Goodbye. What can I do for you? Ahem! Would you please let me and Headmaster Block in? I only heard the footsteps of one person. 469-41. Oh, pardon me, Headmaster Block. That's better. Timmy's already looked in the rat accessible files. He found the door code in one of them. Blocky won't mind if I borrow his pen. Well, he probably would, but he doesn't need to know. Right then, Blocky was fiddling with this straw when I surprised him. A small bottle. What's this? A letter. Dear Council Leader Van Buren, rest assured of my fullest support during the election campaign. Nevertheless, as headmaster, it is my duty to point Article 47, Paragraph 6 of the school rules out to you. Advertising of any form is prohibited in the school, and I must insist that the entire campus be left out of the electoral campaign. And now, the final inventory list for the ground floor of the school. Then there's a list of all sorts of objects, although it appears Headmaster Block isn't quite finished yet. <whistles> I'm impressed. The Headmaster forbids advertising in school, even if it is for Van Buren's campaign. Law and order seem more important to him than personal benefit. And yet he tries to badger me out of the school. Strange. Instead, no bomb, no plan of attack, nothing. The headmaster seems to be the most law-abiding man in Seastone. Could he really be a danger to the Archmage? I'm pretty sure there's a law that prohibits murdering the Archmage. Why is he acting so strange? If he's not part of the plot against the Archmage, then who is? The only thing in this drawer was this bottle. Spidery old-fashioned writing, hard to decipher. Dragon sweat. Dragon sweat! What is the probability of the headmaster having the one ingredient for magic ink in his drawer that I couldn't find anywhere else? Talk about luck! <laughs> 